I got something really nice. Hi, my name is Victor Bart. Welcome to Retro Machines. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at this machine. This video is sponsored by my long-term sponsor PCBWay. If you want your circuit boards designed, realized and printed, you should check out PCBWay. Starting prices as low as $5 for a one or two layer design. Place your order now, links in the description. First a little story about this machine, because this is a dumpster computer. But this came out of a dumpster many many years ago and the person that caught it and used it as uh, his daily driver asked me do you want to have it otherwise I would put it back in the dumpster. The first life was before the dumpster, the second life was when that person caught it as a daily driver and maybe if this is cool hardware it can be get his third life as a retro machine because the hardware inside of here socket 775 is I think a sweet spot in like the more modern retro stuff yeah let's take a look at what we have the case is a Salmon set machine GT Dowsond and this is a really awesome case it's fully aluminium two big air intakes at the front power reset microphone speaker USB 1 and 2 firewire the floppy drive is also really cool because this is a combination drive, floppy drive and memory card reader. It was a really nice drive to have in 2008 when floppies were absolute obsolete and memory cards uh, became much more popular uh, with photo cameras. And I really love the combination uh, drives like this. To be honest, in 2008 I never used any uh, floppy anymore, maybe for BIOS update, but for normal use and normal users floppy drives were completely obsolete already. Here we have a standard DVD burner, all the cover plates are installed here. And let's take a look at the back panel, it doesn't look much, but here's a door and the screws are here. And there are more screws here, so you can also take this side panel off. It has some tiny scratches but in general this case is in a really good shape. But the other side is even cooler because it has a drive bay door here also fully aluminium 5 millimeters and here we have some toolless hard drive uh, base so we can install four hard drives here so just open the box Put the drives in and then you have your cables ready and plug it in. So that was pretty cool. But also this is a door with a window. And the window is in a good shape. Yeah I hear a little scratch but uh, it's a smoky uh, window. And there are screws here so you can replace it if you want. But first Let's take a look at the rear. There's a power supply installed, a 12 cm salmon fan, probably with, that came with the case. The I.O. shield is installed. Haha, <laughs> look at this. The, <laughs> the plastic is still on the I.O. shield. Oh nice, Republic of Gamers. We have an Asus motherboard, yes. And an ROG board, even more awesome. So we have a PS2 for a keyboard, but not for the mouse. Two USBs, an SPF out, an optical out here, a CMOS reset button, Firewire, two ESETAs, two gigabit ports and four extra USBs here. We have a sound card here, an extra USB 3.0. The video card was taken out by the previous owner because he had another machine where the onboard video was broken so he took this card. But that is not a problem because I have some cool video cards that can fit in this generation of hardware. And the case is pretty heavy. And there's not much inside because the hard drives are out, uh, no video card etc. But the aluminium is just so thick and sturdy. And the case is not bent. Only here there's a screw broken off and the screws here are missing. But it's sticking uh, uh, out a little bit so maybe I can take this out and just replace the screws. If we take a look inside 
we see an awesome motherboard, but more on that later, with a stock intercooler. <laughs> so this machine is probably never overclocked, but this motherboard is completely capable of overclocking. So that is quite funny. So maybe if I would use this system, I would uh, see if I would buy like an other better cooler instead of this one. <laughs> But the Intel stock coolers, many people hate them, but they are reliable, they make a bit more noise, but after many years they spin perfectly fine. And this machine is around 2008, so this is already around 15 years old and the fan spins without any issue. Here we have a Salmon power supply, 500 watt unit. So that's pretty nice to have a strong power supply from this era. And let's take the sound card out because this is a special one. This is like the Supreme FX2 from Republic uh, of Gamers. So this is the original sound card that came with this motherboard and it has his own proprietary connector. So it's really awesome that it is included in this machine still after all those years. And here the audio connector for your CD-ROM audio where we talked about in the AWA 32 unboxing and this is the modern version. So probably this board is complete. So we have a big mess of cables and a an, uh, Molex Susata splitter so that can go out. So we have enough SATA uh, power connectors here and on this cable so I'm not sure why that splitter was in. So this can go to all the drives and this for the base. Enough uh, power options from this uh, power supply. And it has a removable cable, so that's always nice. And here we have the six pin from video card, so that's also nice to have. Luckily that cable is not missing. This orange SATA cable goes to the Sony uh, DVD burner. The floppy drive itself is not connected. But the uh, USB cable for the card reader is connected. Here for more SATA cables, probably for the drives, because the drives were taken out before I got this machine. The two front fans are 8 cm each. Now let's take a look at the motherboard, because this is an Asus ROG Blitz Extreme. This motherboard has a P35 uh, chipset, socket 775 and the nice thing about this board is it has DDR3 memory. So this is one of the latest generations socket 775 boards. And this is a Corsair XMS3 uh, module, just 1333 makers, 2 gigabyte stick. Not much memory in this machine, but it is easy to upgrade because DDR3 is uh, getting much cheaper and uh, uh, you probably can find a uh, cheap uh, 4 gigabyte sticks. Not sure if this board supports 8 gigabyte sticks. Maybe it's a little bit too young for it. But I see 3 Corsair modules and some random modules. So there's a mismatch in the memory. And this memory module without a heat spreader is an Apacer 2 gigabyte uh, stick. So it probably works. It's not the best combination with a uh, mixed set of uh, memory. But we have 8 GB of memory, which is for that generation fine. But we can easily upgrade it to more. And the super nice thing about this board is this rubber stops over this chipset. Because this is the first Asus ROG motherboard that supports like a hybrid system for chipset cooling that you can also directly put water cooling on this uh, chipset and uh, the heat pipes goes to everywhere so this is a real overclocker motherboard it's really funny that it just has the Intel stock cooler instead of something wicked or insane if this motherboard is completely working and stable this is one of the retro boards that you want to save right now even if you don't make a build uh, with this board now, it's cool to collect stuff around it to do a build with it someday. In a few years, less and less motherboards of this high-end type can be found or for a lot of money. So let's take a look at the USB card. 
probably some cheapo stuff. Two USB 3.0s, a Molex to power it, PCI uh, E one time, and here it says Acer. So this came probably out of an Acer computer. So not a cheap no-name China stuff, but probably uh, just cheap OEM stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what's the difference of that? So we have the proprietary sound card slot, two PCI 32-bit ports, two PCIe one-time slots in the middle, and two PCI uh, E16 uh, slots. It supports cross-links, but uh, not SLI. But that is a little bit of a disappointment because I have a really cool set of. Uh, NVIDIA GTX 60 Ti's that I can run in SLI but not on this platform. We have six SATA 300 ports here, uh, one uh, IDE port, a floppy uh, connector and a lot of uh, USB headers here and a firewire header that's not plugged in right now but also who uses Firewire? We are not Mac users. I think on PC it was not that well implemented. Or yeah, maybe people with some camera stuff, Firewire 400, but Firewire 800, you almost never see it on machines like this. And this is probably also Firewire 400. I think this is a really awesome machine to get up and running again. Let's uh, try it out and see. Uh, if it works. I know it worked before but just yeah let's install my uh, first bought PCIe video card an Asus GT8600 and it was a medium range uh, video card and this card I played Crisis on it. Let's install the video card because I'm curious uh, what kind of CPU is in this system because the previous owner only said it's a quad core and it's socket 775 because of the motherboard so it could be a Q6600 which is a nice CPU but I really hope it's like a later uh, like a Q what is it a 9450 or something so a quad core with a 1333 maker front side bus that would be really cool but even with a Q6600 it's an awesome CPU for this kind of era of uh, gaming. Okay, let's plug in the system. I see already a light on the motherboard and also a power button inside of the motherboard. Okay, we have LED fans, blue ones. And a green light on the monitor. Okay, we have a Q6600, yeah, 2.4 kHz, 4 cores, standard old style uh, BIOS, but I like this kind of BIOS. Let's check the system specs, processor type Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600 at 2.4 kHz, 4 cores, 8 GB of memory. We have a working system with an insanely great Asus ROG motherboard. But with more a basic quad core, the Q6600. It's a great CPU, but this motherboard also supports the latest socket 775 quad cores with the 1333 MHz front side bus. So let me know in the comments what would you build out of this system? What direction would you like to go? Like go with this CPU and see how far we can overclock it or get like a later quad core should I upgrade the memory to more memory or uh, should I use a time correct video card or try a video card that is like newer I started with this uh, card the 8600 GTS with the ID let's get now a medium range video card and upgrade it in one year and I upgrade it to the uh, 9800 GT but I sold that card that would be a perfect match for this system and in my own Q6600 I went later to the NVIDIA GTX 570 so that would also be uh, working in this system only I have uh, one 6 pin uh, power connector from the video card and I even forget to plug it in right now so the video card is without a 6 pin 
and it's still working. I didn't expect that. Maybe I should find uh, more 6 pin cables for the Salman ZM500HP. So if someone has uh, one laying around, let me know. This motherboard doesn't support SLI, so I can't go with my 660Ti uh, SLI setup. That would be insane for this kind of hardware. So for the storage, should I call uh, hard drives or maybe uh, Western Digital Raptor, the 10,000 RPM drives? Or should I just get an SSD for it? Because that's also very cheap nowadays and insanely fast. A lot of options to do with this system. I also have the plans to rebuild my own Q6600. But that is a different style of motherboard. This is a high-end gaming motherboard and my own Q6600 was on a workstation motherboard with PCI X64 for my SCSI card back then. But this motherboard was more to the future with PCIe uh, one time slot. I didn't have that on that board. Should I rebuild my workstation or should I uh, rebuild this system first? Yeah, let me know because we have a lot of options to go for. I think I will keep this case uh, for this motherboard and the power supply because it's a good match. But the DVD player will go on top because that's the place where a DVD player needs to go. So we just need to get a good video card and storage for it. And yeah, let me just know what kind of random upgrades you would do. Probably we can find every part for a decent price from this era. And also the system is complete that all the brackets are in to install hard drives. So yeah, we have a great system. So if you like to support me, you can support me monthly on Patreon and get access to my awesome Discord server or you can use my Amazon affiliated links. And thanks for watching.